me. Tell me, baby, this is what we're getting ready to do. This is the land that I desire to buy. These are the businesses that I desire to have. This is what I want. Make it clear. I thrive in clarity. The Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. So I ought to know exactly where I stand with you. Hear this. I ought to know exactly where I stand with you. And I ought to know where I fit in your life. I'm not competing with your mama, your sister, your daughter, your dog. All right, guys. Welcome to Burning Your Babs. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin. Wait, by Jesse, I'm gonna go right here. <laughs> Carrie, and I'm gonna come back to you. What are you looking for in a man? So let me say this before I say, is my, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, before I. Okay, so get ready, okay, for the first lady of no birth. Cause she, ha she's, <laughs> Woo, sit back and listen to Dr. Curry Turner, the future Mrs. Bryant. Here we go. I say what I want, what I desire in a man. Let me say this. There is nothing that a man I love couldn't put in my hands and I multiply it. That's nothing. Right. Right. I don't care if he worked at Burger King. By the time we get finished, he gonna own a chain of them. There is nothing. There is nothing a man I love couldn't put in my hands and I can't multiply it. So let me put that right here. <laughs> what, what, Travis, she talking to you? What I, de what I desire though, as Mrs. Uh, uh, Kerry Tana, she's coming in hot. So uh, just listen to what she said, yo. <laughs> Chamo Bryant, you has a fool. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fool. Something in your eyes, baby. <laughs> The Bible doesn't give a whole lot of information necessarily on how we date, but we can look at the characteristics of God to determine what type of person we want. So I'm is. not telling you a person that I want to date. I'm telling you what I want from a husband. Yeah. So from a husband, I desire a man who has very clear vision. Yes. He is clear about purpose and destiny, not just for himself, but a man who you marry has to be able to cultivate what is in and on you as well. Yeah. So I can't have a man who is unclear about where he is going and who is intimidated by what and who I am. He has to be able to help me cultivate what I am as well. So I desire clear vision. I desire clear purpose. I need definition. I'm not a go with the flow type of woman. I need to know where we going, what we doing, what's the destination. I thrive. Hear this. I thrive when I know what's going on and I shouldn't have to ask you. I need you to lay out the plan for us. Take me on a drive. Tell me, baby, this is what we're getting ready to do. This is the 
You have women who are carrying destiny and purpose on them. You don't have time for all of this stuff. And let me tell you this, the enemy uses relationships with us because he knows that it is the one thing that can derail what our destiny is. Hell studies how we love and who we love. It is the thing that demons use the most. This is why we date the same spirit in a is. different body. There it is. There it is. There it is. He knows that if I can get her in a dysfunctional relationship, I can steal her confidence. I can kill her esteem. And then I can destroy her destiny. So for me, the things that I desire, to me, that ain't that much. Oh, hallelujah. That ain't that much. Because in, because in comparison about what you gonna get back from me, come on, baby, the least that you can do is provide that. Come on. You give that to me and everything else is fine. It's not that complicated. We want people who are committed to us, who will love us and we will be able to do the same. I'm not intimidated by trauma. We all have it. My challenge is, do you want to come out of it? Am I going to be destroyed by trying to help you overcome what you are in? That's what I want in a, a man's man. Huh? A man's man. Lord Jesus. She said she don't want that much. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you got good five more minutes. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> you've heard her loud and clear. Okay. You've heard her loud and clear. So, that is Dr. Curry Tana articulating what she's looking for this was uh like a year ago exactly she wants a man's man so my question is now that she has accepted a ring now that she's posed to be uh mrs bryant the first lady of new birth does jamal bryant fit that category does Jamal Bryan fit everything that she just told us? According to her, like he'll be getting more. According to her, she wants a man's man. He just doesn't want somebody who's just sleeping with anybody out there. Hmm? <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Yes, so that is... Um, <laughs> I could not even like believe. So yes, she was very loud. And obviously these days, right, when a woman is talking, your voice, high-pitched voice and everything, the whole place just went bananas. So it's like, okay, she's saying some sense over here. She's saying something and everything. Okay, like, you know, but God is not the author of confusion. That, that has got nothing to do with you being in a relationship, okay? You're looking for a godly man, okay? You want a man who fears God. According to her own testimony, she was married before she was divorced. Was it a biblical divorce, okay? We know Jamal Bryant was also divorced. Was it a biblical divorce? Why can't you go back to your husband? Why can't he go back to his wife? Nevertheless, these guys are supposed to get married and they're going to get married, right? Because I was just like, wait a minute. And then on another podcast she shared, she was dating uh, a Muslim, okay? So if you're dating a Muslim, were you dating a Muslim? Why are you a believer or not? He said, oh, no, the guy didn't convert. I also didn't convert. Like, okay, why are you dating somebody? who is clear and equally yoked to you because you're going in two different directions. So, yeah, so I guess when she says those things, Jamal was like, okay, you know what? It's time to put a ring on it. <laughs> Woo! Yes, 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 yes. So that was Kerry Tana, okay? All right, what are you guys saying? <laughs> oh, welcome in Christ with Andrea. She says she was a man's man. <laughs> That's a good one, but Jamo is a ladies' man. <laughs> shots fired, shots fired, shots fired. <laughs> oh, well, she will find that out, I'm sure, Jordan. <laughs> and um, a spiritual sister marry mm. a Christian brother. Could that happen? Could that be equally, or somebody of, of a religion, and let's not even make it put in the box of Christian, somebody who's religious in general, would you say that they could have success and be equally yoked with those two differences in belief systems? I say that grown people can do whatever grown people choose to do. So you can do whatever you choose to do, but again, 
for me, I could not do it. So let me just say that. And I dated a gentleman before who was Muslim. Um, my mm. first time ever, absolute great experience. It wasn't a horrible experience, but at the end of the day, it could only go so far. I wasn't converting. He wasn't converting. Uh, mm. And so when it came down to marriage, family, and what that would look like, I'm a whole pastor. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it didn't work for me. So for me, I'm, I'm going, to, I can't say what is going to be successful or not for another person. I'm saying, again, it goes back to those core values, right? Um, do we believe the same thing? Are we going in the same direction? And how does that play out when we begin to plan for our future? Because let me say this, mm -hmm. there are two Christians that can get together and they ain't equally yoked. Do you understand what that's I'm saying? Right, so right. It's, that's why I said I didn't even use Christian and Christian because I don't, I think that we've made that the focus of it. And that's not always what it is. Again, you know, what does that look like when you bring families together? So I can't say, oh, it won't work if, if one religion gets with another religion. Only you know that when you come together to make decisions for your life. But as for me and my house, I know that I have to have a, a man that believes, follows the principles of the Lord Jesus Christ, because I believe that that is what will work best for me. Mm. Man, that makes actually perfect sense. Yes, guys. That is the first lady of uh, no birth. Jamal's uh, co-pastor. Okay? What, like, why are you even a pastor to begin with? Okay? Why are you even a pastor to begin with? Guys... The word of God, it doesn't matter if you're in China. It doesn't matter if you're in Japan. It doesn't matter if you're in Afghanistan. It does not even matter even if you don't believe it. Okay? It is besides the point. The word of God is the word of God. Okay? According to her, oh, adults can do whatever else they want. What do you mean that adults can do whatever else they want? Huh? And so if you're telling me adults can do whatever they want, so it's fine when these adults are, are changing uh, their children. They are adults. They can do whatever they want, right? It's fine. Right now, we are in June, right? Pride month, right? Love is love. It's fine. Whatever the adults can do. That's what she's saying. You take that to its logical conclusion. Not only that, she actually said, oh, it didn't work for me. I dated the Muslim before. Like, what, what are we doing here? What is this? Okay. As Christians, we do not have that liberty. Okay. Your liberty is in Christ. You do not have liberty to sin. You do not have liberty to do the things your way just because they work for you. That's pragmatism. Okay. It doesn't matter what works for you. What does the word of God teach in that thing, in that area? What if, if it's not, what are the biblical principles of that? The biblical principles are, do not uh, be unequally yoked, okay? So what are you doing with a Muslim, okay? Just because it's an adult, that doesn't that, that make it okay. Adults need to conform to the scriptures. So, and then she's a pastor over there. No wonder we just witnessed everything, right? Those are the things that, that are happening over there, okay? Marriage is a gift to mankind, okay? So if Muslim want to marry Muslim whatsoever, fine. As long as it's between a man and a woman, because that's how God has designed it, right? That marriage is a covenant. But marriage is an illustration of the gospel between Christ and the church. So you as a believer, you understand that. What are you doing with a Muslim? What are you doing with somebody and equally yoked? Huh? I was just like, oh, and you are a pastor for that matter, doctor for that matter, okay? I stand corrected, Dr. Karitana. Yeah, man, this is, this is the teaching out there. And in, in Atlanta, in Atlanta, guys, I'm telling you, man, it's just like <laughs> we are in trouble, okay? We are, we are so much in trouble, okay? They don't care about the scriptures because... Whatever they're doing, they do whatever else they want, okay? Proverbs, no, not even a single person. Everybody knows Proverbs 31, okay? An excellent wife who can find. She's far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life, okay? We're not going to read all of it, but this is the picture of what a godly woman should just be. You seek the good of your husband, the good of your home, okay? And the husband is going to take care of everything else. But, yeah, this is uh, uh, where we are at, guys, okay? So, <laughs> the first lady of Atlanta, whoo, Lord help us. <laughs> She's against aging people. To have a God. You can't be a pastor. And then, this is the problem. Why women cannot be pastors, by the way, right? Because we don't want to hate other people's feelings, okay? You, you, know, you cannot bring that word with authority. That's why women don't belong on the pulpit. God commands us not to be on the pulpit to begin with. So, yeah. So, if a woman comes over there like, oh, you know, you know, you are not that. You can do whatever else you want to say. That's what they're getting over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So, yeah, man. So, they like people itching ears. So, when God is judging people, he actually gives you the people that you deserve. He gives you the leaders that you deserve. And when women are ruling over you, that on itself is judgment. And then let alone a woman pastor. Ooh. It's trouble, 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 trouble. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like this video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.